Hello everybody, it's Mr. Second Amendment and today I'm shooting the Smith & Wesson Model 19 Classic. And I'm just going to get the shooting it and then you're going to see the different rounds that I'm going to be testing in it. And then uh, we're going to see just a 10 yard standing accuracy test on uh, single action and on double action. And uh, you'll check out the results. But first, let's just go shoot it. Something I can definitely tell you is the gun's fault, though, is when I'm ejecting brass. These are all spent. So when it comes time to eject, whatever method you're using, when I hit these shells like that, all right, they start coming out, and we start having problems just like this. All right, and the reason why we're having so many issues here is because there's actually this pretty raised and sharp edge on the grips, this kind of shelf-looking thing. And what happens is shells seem to get stuck like that. Uh, and it only happens on the shell in this position, on the bottom position right here that's right against the frame. So that is kind of a side note, uh, trying to do speed reloads or at least get these shells out fast, is the shells are kind of getting caught up just like that. So I don't think the original Model 19s had grips like that. Uh, it's just kind of this raised shelf, I guess is the only way I can describe it. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is just kind of take off the grips and then just kind of sand that down carefully and make it smooth so it doesn't jam up shells. But it's like the perfect storm for everything to go wrong. All right, guys, so just a quick demonstration. I'm going to be firing two shots of the 38 Special. That's just Remington UMC 130 grain basic stuff. And then I'm going to fire two shots of 357 Magnum. This is the Remington 125 grain. All right, so this is going about 800 feet per second. This is about 1400. And you can see there's kind of a length difference going on here. All right, so hopefully you can tell. You can definitely tell when you shoot it, I'll tell you that. So first two shots are 38, next two shots are 357. Let's check it out. And real quick, let's talk about how do we use these Safari Land speed loaders. So you're basically just gonna take it and put the rounds in one at a time. And it's kind of a weird setup I have right now, so I apologize. So you get all six of them in there, and then you could put it on a flat surface, upside down. I, I tend to like to just do that, and as I'm pressing down on the rounds, I push up, so I'm pushing up and then I twist right. All right, and now you could check, make sure they're all in there. All right, the way they get released, there's no twisty knob or anything. The only way they get released is there's kind of a, you probably won't be able to see it, but there's a piece in there that needs to get depressed, depressed down. So I'm gonna show you when you're actually doing the reload. All right, dumping your spent shells. Now you come in with this and you wanna let gravity be your friend. So you gotta kind of dip the gun down, but I'm just showing you. All right, so you go like that, and once you, you'll feel it click, all right, and that lets you know that the shells are gone. 
and they just fall in place. So you just do it by pushing. And this part interfaces, this interfaces with the inside of the speed loader, it clicks, they go down, and that's how you use the uh, Safari Land speed loader. So far, uh, I haven't success with it, but I can definitely tell you I miss magazines for sure. All right, here's a little side trick. Uh, I've shown it before, I'll just bring it up again. You can do different kinds of silhouettes. If you're trying to do cheap and quick targetry for the range, you can pre-make your own silhouettes from cardboard and just kind of cut out stencils and then just take some spray paint on a white uh, poster board backer or the backside of cardboard or something. And suddenly you got yourself some quick and easy targets. And of course the sky's the limit. You could make it however you want. And then you just staple gun it out there. I'm gonna put it over there next and uh, we're gonna see what happens. All right guys, I got two silhouettes spray painted down there at 10 yards. I'm gonna do six rounds, 357. Quickly reload as fast as I can and do another six rounds on the second one. So. I'll film it. I'll go down there when it's done, but I figured you want to see this side first. So here we go. Oh my God. You know, I'm gonna do a straight cut. So let's go down, let's check it out. Let me tell you, if you haven't shot 357 like that, that's, that only gets worse. All right, here we go. Yep, you can see that, let me get out of the way. So that was my first one, and then I did the reload and I got to this one. So that's that's more of a, uh, that's, that's more practice for some kind of like, if you were to carry this, um, but it was fun. A little intense. I'm sure you got some muzzle flash on the uh, camera. I'll have to check it out. All right, guys, I've really been emphasizing double action because my double action game really needs to get stronger, especially on revolvers. All right, but we're unloaded right now. But the technique, from what I understand, that I'm trying to work with on double action is to pull it and kind of get to that point, that sweet spot where you're pretty much kind of making your own single action, sort of. I don't know if I'm describing that. So instead of just doing a straight pull, the double action technique is actually the kind of hang and then pretty much sort of give yourself, get to that point, and it takes a little practice, there we go. All right, but you kind of want to get to that point where you almost give yourself kind of like a fake single action. You're, all, you're already there. So the key on that is understanding your gun, getting familiar with your trigger, and just being able to get that muscle memory of, of practicing exactly at what point and how much pull do you need to kind of hang out sort of on single action and snap that shot. Uh, I know dudes who are actually pretty accurate on double action. That's all they do. Uh, for me, in a defensive purpose on this pistol, I only am planning on doing double action only. So uh, that's why I've been doing a lot of double action out here is just trying to get used to that trigger. And again, we're unloaded. All right, just getting used to it. At what point do I, can, can I just hang out and give myself almost kind of like some, uh, single action? All right, so that, that's kind of what I've been doing. That's something I'm working with. It's definitely gonna take some more time. It's not going to be perfect, but I'll tell you, I definitely miss magazines. All right, so we're at 10 yards standing. That was the fire you just saw. Did a little warm up here, six shot group double action, and then came back, did another six shot group double action. And that actually took my time and uh, did a single action group here. So you could tell my double action definitely needs some work, but, uh, and I intend to work on it, but this is where we're at so far, 10 yards.
All right, I'm gonna run the test again. This time I got one silhouette. I'm gonna be doing 12 rounds, one silhouette, and it's 38 special. I'm just gonna go for it, reload, go for it, and then uh, I'll do a straight cut, so here we go. Oh, that forcing cone is hot as shit. Go check it out. Yeah, so I'll show you what I was talking about. The forcing cone gets kind of hot when you're doing that kind of reload. So, let me get out of the way. There we go. All right, so we got 12 holes right here. So definitely something to think about if you are gonna be using this kind of gun or, or a wheel gun of some kind, you might wanna think about maybe 38 plus P or something like that. Cause 38, just standard FMJ target stuff, pretty easy to control in a gun of this size and weight. So you gotta get the trade off. Do you want the power? Do you want the control? Of course, it's always a balance of uh, just kind of balancing what's, what's more important to you. So uh, all in all, this has been really fun. And uh, let's go back to the workbench. Let's check out the groups of how we did uh, using the different types of ammo at 10 yards standing. Real quick, let's talk about that forcing cone. So I was doing this reload like that, dumping the shells, and the problem is the forcing cone, which is that, you can see it right there, that's what forces the bullets into the rifling. After a lot of shooting, and actually it doesn't take too long with 357, that forcing cone gets pretty damn hot. So when you come in and do that reload like that, I was feeling the heat on that part of my finger right there, because I was coming in and doing that and all I wanted to do was get away from it as fast as possible. So there are different types of reloads on how to handle that. I'll do a, a revolver reload video later. Um, but yeah, using this technique right here, you're making contact with that forcing cone and that's kind of a problem just to think about, but uh, still fun either way. All right, so how do we end up doing with accuracy? So start here, uh, everything you're about to see the left side is single action, the right side is double action, and you got one type of ammo on each line. All right, so single action on the Remington UMC 130 grain looked like that. And we had double action looking like this. So I was starting to throw everything kind of to the left. Uh, my double action really does need some help there, a little more practice. But uh, <clears throat> moving on here, we got the Federal that lead no stuff. And single action ended up being pretty good. Double action was kind of spread out. Everything you're seeing here is 10 yards standing. All right, so moving on, you got the Winchester full metal jacket, single action on the left up here, and then you got your double action on the right. So that was okay. This is where it starts to get fun. Got that Remington, the carry load, 357, 125 grain, and uh, single action ended up being pretty decent. Double action needs some work. Now, at some point here, I adjusted the sights. Uh, because some of these it was on, some of these it wasn't, and I really wanted it to be on for my carry ammo. So uh, we just went ahead and adjusted that, moving in. Here's your spear, 158 grain. I only did three shots of each type, so there it is. Uh, three shots on single action, it was moving to the left. But then double action, it was almost like I was bringing it over to the right, so that was kind of mystery zone. Uh, the rest of this just kind of messed around. My buddy brought out his uh, Ruger Vaquero, so we shot that uh, three-shot group there. Three shots is all I really wanted to do, and I was set. Point of aim was just in the middle of the red space. That's kind of a side note. But overall, guys, if you really wanted to bench it, I think it could do much better than this. This is just me standing at 10 yards. You guys saw the silhouettes, so we're looking at kind of like a carry you know, capability, is it there? Um, I think so for now, but I definitely have uh, some goals of doing a little better than this. But uh, that that was the, uh, the groups that I got for record. And overall, what are my thoughts on the Smith & Wesson Model 19 Classic? It was a joy to shoot. Um, the one and only complaint that I have uh, functionally about this gun is those weird grips. We already talked about it, this kind of shelf thing that's going on. So I'm gonna re I'm gonna kind of re-engage this. Uh, I'll sand that down, kind of make it nice and smooth. 
But uh, overall, functionally speaking, the only problems we had on the Remington UMC, I shot 250 rounds of it today. And out of that, we had two where the primer got struck, it just didn't go off. So we didn't have any such issues at all like that on any other load that we tested today. And I shot a lot of the Winchester uh, 38 Special as well. So out of everything I shot today, I didn't have any problems except for two on the Remington UMC. So definitely think that's an ammo problem. I'm comfortable saying that. But overall, guys, lots of fun. And now you just want to check and look around. I'm not seeing any, any weirdness that uh, I shouldn't see. You just got carbon, some buildup. But especially on a new gun, you just kind of want to check it out, make sure that you don't see anything weird or, you know, a huge crack in the cylinder or something strange. But everything's checking out. It's looking good. But I uh, look forward to this. Going to be doing some uh, reloads videos on revolvers. And uh, thanks for watching.